After her mother suddenly disappears, a teenage girl discovers that she has an extraordinary destiny in a hidden world she never knew existed in the mortal instruments, City of Bones. Hi, I'm Jamie Campbell Bower. Hi, I'm Lily Collins. I'm Kevin Zegers. And you're watching Made in Hollywood. There's a scene. Every day you live your life. You make sure you come straight home tonight. Ordinary, normal. You know, Mom, she gets like this sometimes. But there's only so long you can hide from the truth. Let's go in here. I love you guys in these characters. I think that the characters are so awesome, but can we talk about each of them? Maybe if you guys can describe your characters a little bit. Uh, I play Clary Frey, who thinks of herself as a normal teenage girl, um, but really she's a shadow hunter, so the child of an angel and a human. Larry, what is it? You didn't see that? I play Jace Wayland, um, who is a shadow hunter. Um, he is uh, rude, sarcastic, vulnerable, lost, confused. It's a portal. Like the Bermuda Triangle. Falls in love with uh, with Clary. What is it about her? She's different. She's gonna get us all killed. I play Alec Lightwood, who is his sort of brother, not really. Uh, also a shadow hunter. It's a bit of a tortured soul. It's a bit nasty. Ultimately, he's sort of a, a protective figure in the sh amongst the shadow hunters. What are you looking at? Why can I see you and no one else can? You're not a mundane. What is a mundane? Someone from the human world. Well, if not a human, then what am I? For, for my character, Magnus Bang, it's an introduction to um, you know the whole series, and uh, he, he he basically helps Lily Collins' his character, Clary. Someone who doesn't know, she knows. She, she sees all these monsters and demons and stuff like that, but her mom wants her to have a normal childhood, teenager life, so uh, I'm the guy that, you know, she, she, she wants me to help out and block all of that out from my memories. Mom, I'm coming home! No, 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 you can't come home, you understand me? You don't come home. What inspired the story for Mortal Instruments? Where did it all begin? I've always been really fascinated with stories about demons and angels and also superheroes. So somehow the idea of creating a race of superheroes who were part angel and fought demons came to me when I was first living in New York City and Shadowhunters grew out of that. The two of you just have a moment until you yell, run. I thought there's a really great role model in this movie. Uh, I have a daughter and I think she needs good role models. And I think Clary Frey is one girl who gets thrown into such a whirlwind of a, of a fairy tale and adventure and how she constantly keeps coming out of it stronger. Uh, I just thought that was such a good inspiration. Well, after you guys read the books and you had these visions of your characters, what was it like finally stepping onto the set and putting on these costumes? I had a vision of who she was not of myself because I was a fan before I was cast. So I was like all the other fans out there who, when anyone's cast, is going to have some sort of reaction to it. The stories you heard as a little girl about things that go bump in the night. There were certain things in the books that weren't, that wasn't achievable. In the book, the character has a, a raven perched on his shoulder um, most of the time, and it just wasn't feasible to do that. You, you have to adapt the circumstances from the book to what you're able to achieve on, on screen in, in a limited amount of time. Intercut with this, yeah, and then we need this, right? We need her looking back at him. And this is where it was really great to collaborate closely with Cassandra. Is There is so much great stuff in the book, and to compress that down to a two-hour movie, was a, was a we had to make some tough choices. Something I've never done before, and um, you know, it was just so uh, interesting for me to partake in, the, in a character like this. Humanity is on the very brink of extinction. I, I never saw, see it as pressure, I didn't see it as pressure. I saw it as a responsibility, and that was there were people who care about something, and that well, your job is to care about it as much. Chase thinks he needs to save the world. There's too many of them. But you don't need to encourage him to do it. Have a little faith. I haven't read the book, so I don't have an image, so right. now you are Clary. Well, I had red hair at the time, and she's a red-headed heroine, yeah. so that kind of helped. That happens with movies, they can dye your hair, can't they? Yeah, well, that, a lot of people don't realize that, because when I was cast, they were like, she's not got red hair, and I was like, but I can color it, right. you know? People's imaginations when it comes to casting is not great. 
So how does it feel when you're standing on set and you're seeing your book, your words, being brought to life? I think that that was the first moment that I really realized they were really making the movie. And I thought, oh my god, they're really doing this. And I started to cry. And Harold came onto the set and he was like, what's, what's wrong? You know, why are you crying? Is it not good? Do you want us to fix it? That's my terrible Norwegian accent. <laughs> and I was like, no, no, I'm just crying because it's like perfect. The werewolves are here to save us. I never thought I'd say that. Made in Hollywood